What's up everybody? Welcome to Paracresis The Daily Dance. This is day four of our brand new series, The Mess A Christmas Story. So I'm just gonna get right into it. And, and here's, here's the thought for today. As we look at the Christmas story, for some of us, maybe it's the first time we're actually getting in there and unpacking it. For some of us, maybe it's the, you know, the, the 10,000th time. But as we get lost in a sense of wonder, um, that's really the encouragement to take some time just in your regular like rhythm of life and experience the story. Just like put yourself, like dive into the actual story to try and understand just how messy the Christmas story actually is. And, um, and so here, here's the thought for today. In your scriptures, the very last book of the First Testament, of the Old Testament, that minor prophet, it's Malachi, right? And so in your Bible, right, you'll have like, you know, Malachi 2, Malachi 3, Malachi 4, and then, and then there's the end of the Old Testament, Malachi 4, that's it. And then all we have to do is turn the page, there's a blank page, then there's like, oh, the New Testament, right? Um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, good. And then all we really have to do is turn the page again, and then there's Matthew, right? So in our Bibles, it's kind of misleading. It seems like, okay, God is speaking. Stuff is happening on the planet here in Malachi. We turn one page, we turn a second page, and then there's Matthew. Then Jesus shows up in the book of Matthew. And it's easy to think that. It's nice, it's neat, it's clean, it's joyful, it's happy. But that is simply not how it happened in history at all. That's not at all how it happened. Um, in fact, so God spoke right through the minor prophets, right? So we have Malachi 3, Malachi 4, and then we don't just turn a page or two and then there's Jesus showing up there in Matthew. What actually happens in history for those people at their time, there were 400 years of silence. God showed up and was speaking and working through the minor prophets, right? And then there's Malachi. And then it's not like five years and God doesn't say anything. It's not 10 years. It's not like an entire generation goes by. When it's not like, hey, you know, um, it's not like you, you turn to your mom or your dad and be like, you know what, I have not heard from God, right? Let's say you're 20 years old. I have not heard from God. Mom, dad, like, did you ever hear from God? And mom and dad's like, no, like, God hasn't spoken, like, in our entire life. And what I find fascinating in this messy story is the very first sound God speaks to humanity after 400 years. That night in Luke 2, the very first sound that God speaks to his people is the sound of a baby crying. Now, let's not overlook the weight of this reality. The first time God says, anything. The first time he communicates to his people, he himself, God, he does it through a baby crying. And you might be thinking, okay, so what? Like, what does that mean? And, and just think about it. God shows up and he communicates and he does so in the most feeble, like weak, in the most fragile way possible. He shows up in a state where he is actually in need. He shows up in a state where all he can do is cry. He cries. That baby's cry. God crying is the first sound his people heard from him in 400 years. If you've ever felt broken or weak or in pain or fragile or in need. And if you've ever cried during this time, God speaks, he breaks the silence by crying with us. That night, humanity held a crying God. But today, for us in 2017, that same crying God holds us.